Intimate partner violence is also a painful problem in the queer community. One in five LGBTQ plus victims say they've experienced some form of physical abuse. But many shelters are traditionally set up to help people in heterosexual relationships. That can leave queer victims feeling like they have nowhere to go. One survivor, Elias Diaz, shares his emotional story with the advocates. Elias Diaz says that he was young, trying to develop his queer identity, acting in adult films, and fell in love. Eventually, we went from, you know, seeing each other every day to um, eventually moving in together. Immediately after we moved in together, the violence started. It started with some choking. Eventually, it went to the point where there was um, uh, punches almost every, every day, shoving broken things around the house. Um, little by little, the, the violence started progressing and getting a little bit more extreme. There was at least one instance in which I genuinely feel, feared for my life. He had actually chased me around the house with a bat. And I didn't realize it until much later is that we didn't have a bat in the house. And so this was uh, just, just speaks to the level of premeditation that was going on. What was that? Like, how did you kind of navigate um, that situation on top of that feeling of feeling like you were trapped? I, I really felt like I had no place to go. I thought I can't afford rent by myself. I had safety needs, but but I really needed to keep a roof over my head. And so that was a big driving force with 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 how I approached that situation and part of why I decided to stay for so long. Do you think that there are many um, queer people out there experiencing what you went through? I, I think that it's it's very much normalized. Our, our support networks are fragile. There was not really a lot of resources that you could access as a young queer person um, in, in terms of housing. We, we don't have a whole lot of people to turn to. And I think a, a big part of this is just wanting to be loved, right? It, wanting to develop a sense of connection with another human being and, and, and not knowing what to model that after. Um, I, I think it's also very much uh, culturally norm, normalized, right? I, I think that a lot of people perceive LGBT people to, to be um, uh, not nonviolent. Elias finally escaped the relationship, got his master's degree, holds elected office, and now wants to help others. When it comes to um, looking at the current system for queer people experiencing domestic violence, what do you feel needs to change or remain the same or needs to be looked at? I think that having specific designated places, um, number one for more men, right? Because I think men in general, it, it is a, a subset of the population that is overlooked when we think about um, domestic violence, but particularly for queer men. I think about um, different ways that we can we, we can uh, address that, right? And, and I think definitely uh, not just short-term immediate housing, but looking at long-term housing options for LGBTQ people. We want to say thank you so much for joining us and thank you for sharing your story with our audience. We greatly appreciate it. If you need help escaping an abusive queer relationship, contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Their website is thehotline.org. The phone number is 1-800-799-SAFE. And coming up next, advocating for more resources to help LGBTQ plus domestic violence victims.